Okay, guys, welcome back. Um, we're sorry that it's been at least two or three, maybe four weeks since we published our last video. Uh, we did get a little sidetracked with school and StarCraft and other such video games. So we have not been focusing as much on this tutorial series. But we're trying to get back into it, so... Today we have for you our vanilla farming episode. It's going to be a quick and dirty how to vanilla farm and whatnot. Um, I would like you all to take a moment to appreciate the lovely intro slideshow-esque sequence I made for you. It does showcase some of our fun little projects or cute little machines we have set up. Uh, we are still working on figuring out how to make nice films in Minecraft, like, you know, with smooth rotation and whatnot to try and spice up the intro a little more. Maybe learn how to use After Effects. Uh, so, as a little preview into what we're doing in the future, our next episode, after this one, will focus on going back to the Industrial Craft Workshop we made in Episode 3, and upgrading it so that it has its own automatic power system, its own super machines and we're going to try and go over some of the mechanics of industrial craft that we didn't talk about so there's a lot in there that the setup we made will be fine but if you try to expand the setup too much it will start to falter and fail and we'll go over why that is and what you do to avoid that so that's episode 5. Episode 6 is going to be a high efficiency mining episode. We're going to go over nether ore mining and all of that kind of stuff. So, why you should go into the nether to get particular ores, what you should try and mine in the overworld, um, the, how you should go about doing it. So we'll give you a very basic mildly effective mining pattern that's really easy to remember. Um, I do tend to go for a combination of efficiency and ease over just pure efficiency because the paths I dig are very easy with mining lasers. So that's what we have to look forward to in the future. Uh, hopefully, if you're lucky, I remembered to overlay what I'm saying now over a little quick and super speedy version of me building the farm. Uh, if you are very astute, you will notice that it actually cuts off pretty early because while I was filming myself, I accidentally turned it off and missed the last third of building the farm. So you don't get to watch me lay down my pretty paths. So that should end roughly five minutes after it starts if you want to fast forward to that point. Um, I will try and put a little news blippet if you want to just skip forward to when the tutorial itself begins. So, there should be... So I can do things like this. Uh, swamp biomes, I neglect to talk about. So, in the video I will be using lily pads, which come exclusively from swamp biomes. And... They are very good to have on hand, especially if you work near a lot of water. They make very nice, easy pathways that look pretty decent. Um, but more importantly, things will not fall through lily pads, so your crops won't fall through lily pads when you break them. You can walk right over them. It essentially makes your farming field one giant flat plain, rather than having either divots in it or blocks poking out of it. So good to keep in mind. Uh, other parts of swamp biomes, lots of rubber trees, so lots of easy rubber if you're near one. I do recommend being near a swamp biome. I would not per se build my house in swamp biomes just because I don't like them. They're not very attractive, they're just flat tree uglies with swamp in them. Uh, they have mushrooms if you want to experiment with mushroom soup or use it as an early form of food. Uh, they have witches. Witches are not good things. They throw potions at you that deal damage over time and impact damage, so you take a lot of damage very quickly and you don't realize that you've taken about a half of it. So, not fun to fight. 
And lastly, there's a lot of clay in jungle biomes. And if you like building with bricks, you'll need it. Otherwise, you only need a handful of clay to make the furnaces in red power. So, I think that covers it. So we're going to connect to Anthony's world. Uh, here we go, logging in. And I want you to know that this is my third time attempting to film this video. The first time, I took too long to do it, so I was dissatisfied with myself. The second time, I completely messed up. So, this is third try number three, and we're going to hope it works. So, before we get into farming and all of that, we're going to go over food. So, the food mechanic is very simple. If you look at my food bar right now, down here, you'll see that it's kind of shaking. And that means I'm hungry. And what I mean by hungry is my saturation has depleted. Minecraft has two food values. It has your raw food value. So my raw food right now is full. It's at, what is this, one, two, three, four, five, ten. So it's at ten. And when I'm at ten food, I'll regenerate health. I can run, I can sprint, I can jump, I'm happy. But since my food bar is shaking, it will start to drain now. Your saturation value is kind of this additional proxy food you have. So when you take damage and when you eat food and not eat food, when you do anything in Minecraft, rather than subtract from your food, it's going to subtract from your saturation pool. So your saturation pool effectively extends how long you're at full food, or at whatever food you stop at. The downside to saturation pools is if you have a really low saturation pool, you're going to go through your food very quickly, which is why foods that have very high saturation values are preferable. And those tend to be the more filling foods. So things like really just cow meat has really high saturation. I'm going to advocate for cow meat this whole episode. So just raise cows. Do it for me. And then eat them and their babies. So your food saturation will drain over time. Uh, if you want more info on this, like the exact numbers, you can go to the Minecraft wiki. Um, or the Wikipedia, I guess. And look up the food saturation values there. Uh, it's, it's really straightforward, so I think I've said enough on that topic, so let's just get into this. So, we're going to start with not the sheep, but these. These are my gate techniques. I like to put double gates. Notice how I open the gate, the sheep stays there. Now notice how if I open both gates, the sheep start to move. And I'm this guy wants to get out. I can see him. But I put the double gate on there because your sheep will try to escape when you open the doors. And cows and pigs. And I've noticed that they will bolt for it. So it's really annoying and tedious to drag them back. Uh, for those of you that don't know, you can lead animals around with wool, or not wool, with wheat. So notice how they follow me around the pen. Breeding is really straightforward. You take your wheat, you right-click the sheep, they get hearts. You right-click another sheep, they get hearts. They kiss each other, and they make a baby. It's just like real life. So, I want you all to know that I am, in fact, a biologist by training. I know what I'm talking about. Uh, you do need sheep. Sheep are not nearly the, as useless as they used to be because you need them to get wool to make jacketed cables. So in Red Power mod, we will be using sheep wool to make blue electric cables and blue alloy cables. Not blue alloy, red alloy cables. So you do need sheep. You also need them to make your bed. Uh, fun fact, we haven't gotten to chainsaws yet, but they will show up in this episode. So... I want everyone to know that chainsaws are a mix of shears and axes. And just like shears, if you right-click a sheep, you can shear it with a chainsaw. So I could go pick that block up if I want. And I guess I will. So, very straightforward. Chainsaws do make this annoying little putter sound in the background. If it really bothers you, you could go into your Minecraft files and delete it. Or replace it with a blank file. I think you might need it in there for the checksum but I'm not the one to ask about that. So this is sugarcane. Very straightforward, very easy to farm. Just smack it, 
and if I'm not in creative mode, it'll work better. So I'm gonna open this and just BAM! Drops like that. Don't break the bottom when you harvest sugar cane. It'll regrow. Very simple. Uh, I do. Everyone should use this mining method if you're not already, or I guess farming method. Sugarcane only grows adjacent to a water tile, not diagonal. So the way you mine, farm sugarcane is you lay down this square, and then at even corners around it, you put your sugarcane, or your water source. And then on top of this, you put a lily pad. The lily pad allows you to stand on it. Water won't fall into it. Water. Uh, when you break the lily, the sugarcane, they won't fall into it. And it makes harvesting it a lot easier. You just run around, you spam your A button, you try not to hit your torches, and that's it. The reason why we need sugarcane is we need sugarcane to make books. And books require a ton of sugarcane. They require sugar three sugarcane per book and three, nope, one leather. Uh, these are cows. So we're done with sugarcane. We're moving on to cows. I have a lot of cows because I've been showing you for three episodes now how to farm cows and I don't kill them after I do it so I apologize for all the cows this is more cows than you need again cows can make babies so I like cows because cows restore four health when you eat their food or four food when you eat their food and have a really high saturation value I think it's like seven and a half or something so cow meat lasts you a long time a lot of bang for your buck uh, we're gonna go over to wheat so wheat farming is pretty simple. You take a hoe. Do I have a hoe? I do not have a hoe. Of course not. So I'm going to switch over to default mode. We're going to get out a hoe. So we get a wooden hoe. I'm going to get my seeds out. And where'd my wooden hoe go? I deleted it, didn't I? I would. So now we take out our hoe, we smack some dirt. Notice that because this dirt is near water, it hydrates and turns into this dark color. This does not happen instantly, it just got lucky. So I put my seed in there and bam, I planted wheat. This is the same seed you get from picking up grass. Notice that if you jump and land on a tile, it turns back into normal dirt. If you stand on a tile and jump on it, nothing bad. Oh, never mind, they changed that. So bad things do happen. So don't jump on your farmland. It will turn back into this, and then you have to go find your hoe and retill it. So that's how to plant any seed. And you get seeds by just smacking grass. So if I take out my sickle, uh, this is something Isaac showed us in an earlier comment. You just smack grass, left-click grass when you're not in creative mode, and bam, it drops. And if I smack over here, it all drops. So, straightforward, easy way to get seeds. When you harvest, oops, they will drop usually two seeds and one wheat. So, it is sustainable. On average, they drop more than seeds than they consume. Uh, hydration, this is actually why I'm refilming this episode because I did not mention the last time I filmed. Uh, anything within three tiles of a water tile will hydrate. So I just go to the corner of my farm, one diagonal, two diagonal, three diagonal tile. And everything in here farms. And you can do some math and show that this is the most efficient arrangement of lily pads in here. Or one of them. There are several. So this is flax. Uh, same hydration effect as with wheat. Flax breaks like sugarcane. So I'm going to get out of creative mode. Maybe if my E button respawns more quickly. And you just smack the top off. It drops flax and uh, seeds. Come back out. Bam. Do that for the whole thing. Flax grows really slowly, so can't do it too often. But they drop string. And use the string to make canvas. Canvas. R button. Then we hit the U button on canvas. And you can make canvas into canvas bags. And if I give myself a canvas bag, uh, I need to exit the screen. Fun fact, you can just click on the screen once you're already in your not enough item mode to look at items up here. 
but I'm going to hit my E button. I'm just going to give myself a canvas bag, and I'm going to right-click it. I can put things in here. I can take them out. Canvas bags do have unique inventories. So if I put something in to one canvas bag, I cannot take it out of another. Uh, if your canvas bag gets destroyed, all the items in it are destroyed with it. So keep that in mind. Uh, just a few more things, then we'll be done. So this is Coco. Um, you go into the forest, the jungle, I guess. You bring back jungle wood. It only grows on jungle wood. I plant it too high. You can plant it three high if you want. Put it down. Bam. Looks like this. Grows into that. Pretty simple. Uh, I do have mine set up in this nice radial pattern. I was experimenting with radial farms when I made this, which is why it took so stupidly long. But we'll continue on. So, pumpkins. Uh, when you mine a pumpkin, mine a pumpkin. When you smack up a pumpkin, it drops, of course, a pumpkin. So you can take the pumpkin and you can convert it into pumpkin seed. And then you plant the seeds. They start off as little green things. They grow up into these big guys, and then they drop a pumpkin off. So really straightforward. Uh, you do need to hydrate them as well. Well, you don't need to, but plants grow faster if they're hydrated. Um, you use pumpkins to make pumpkin pie. I don't know anything about the food mechanics of pumpkin pie, so I don't use it. There's Batman. Uh, you also use them to make golems. So you lay down the iron golem body, you put the head on it. I don't know if there's anything else involved in that. I don't use them. Uh, watermelon, similar to pumpkin. You can actually transmute pumpkin into watermelon using the minium stone. Um, watermelon, you confuse with gold nuggets to make glistering melon, and then you can use a glistering melon in a brewing station to make healing potions. And those are really handy, so one of the things we will do in the future is go over how to brew things, because potions are fun. And if you want to EXP farm, potions are the way to do it. And we'll go over how to do that if we come across a monster dungeon. I think there is one downstairs somewhere in the cave network. Last but not least, we have cacti. So, farming tricks for cacti. Cacti cannot grow adjacent to an item or a block. So, notice that all of these are this space, this space, this space, and this space are empty. If I wanted to, I could put a block here. And cacti are incinerators, so if something lands on a cactus, it will be destroyed. So, notice that my cacti hit that, it was destroyed. To demonstrate again, I'm just going to throw weed at it. So, bam, destroyed. Destroyed. It's a little bit safer than lava. Um, you can use them as monster defenses if you want. You can put cacti down and flow water at them and trap monsters in it and kill them. Uh, you don't get XP if you don't damage the monster, so keep that in mind. Last but not least, we have the tree farm. So, we've got the rubber trees pretty straightforward and we've got these humongous jungle trees so I harvest the giant mega trees because you get a lot of wood for very little effort so you get jungle saplings you put them in this four, 2 by 2 pattern just square uh, if you want to you can grow them with bone meal it takes one bone meal to generate all this wood so it's a very good investment of your bone meal uh, alternatively you can take your chainsaw so Right now, my chainsaw is at 9,900 EU. Uh, this tree's a little... I think this is a small enough giant tree that I can get it all in one blow. So I'm just going to try it. And yep, there we go. So I did not use all of my chainsaw to do it. The whole tree drops. Uh, I'm going to turn magnet mode on quick to just pick up everything. Uh, oh, that's unfortunate. So this time it only dropped two jungle trees, which is unusual. Normally they drop six to eight. So I'm just going to cheat and put down extra. So if you live near a jungle, this is very feasible. If you don't live near a jungle, just bring back a lot of jungle sapling. Uh, the easiest way to get jungle sapling is to just take a sickle and destroy all of the tiny bushes you come across. And that concludes today's farming episode. So that was 18 minutes. 
a little bit longer than I hoped for since I do plan to splice in that earlier footage of me building this. Uh, for those of you that are curious, this tile I'm walking on is stone slab from the Sfax Pure BD texture pack. Actually all of this is Sfax. Uh, this is marble. And I think that's the only interesting stuff I have out here. So, Thanks for watching. Thank you for your patience in us producing this episode. And we'll see you in the next episode. Have fun.